All right, we're going to get started with the advanced adapter external slave uh, cylinder swap on the Comanche. Our last trip to High Rock Canyon, you can see our video where we lost the uh, fairly new slave cylinder, uh, the LUK uh, clutch kit. And so I don't want to deal with that again. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I got the shop that's been warming up for a while with the old patio heater. And uh, we've got advanced adapter. 712590IR, it's the uh, more complete kit. The Comanche is 88, but it's already got an AX15 out of a 92 or 93 Cherokee. Um, kit's uh, fairly complete. Bell housing, front nose of the transmission for the new throwout bearing setup. It comes with clutch fork, um, slave cylinders, a crown piece. Uh, I was surprised it did not come with the front seal, which since it fits in that nose, you're gonna have to have. So that could get you if you don't know that ahead of time. Um, throughout bearing had no brand name or anything on it and looked pretty crudely made. Couldn't find a part number or anything. So we did go ahead and purchase a national one, which although it's made in China, does look to be of a higher quality. So I really don't want to go into here again. Um, and it comes with the line to make the two different styles because the early one's got the threaded in um, master and slave and the new one's got to press in with a pin. And uh, so anyway, we're going to get started and see how this goes. I'm not going to film the whole process of pulling the trans and transfer case because it's probably been covered a million times and it's pretty straightforward. Pretty much just unbolt drive lines and bell housing and cross member and everything else until it's ready to come out. Starter needs to come out. Um, first time I pulled it years ago, this E12 socket required for the upper two bolts kind of threw me for a loop. They got them up there where you can barely see them, so it was kind of a challenge figuring out how to get them out. Um, the Azzy's uh, Design Works uh, transfer case linkage is probably worth a mention. It's made in USA small company um smoother more reliable than stock watch out for the knockoffs on ebay they're just a little cheaper and probably not as good um it's doable on the ground i've probably done it three times on this truck with just a floor jack and if you can get somebody to help you right when it's ready to come out and go in you can do it we're going to cheat and use the lift because we can but uh also would recommend replacing the crank sensor with the best one you can get pretty much any time you uh, can access it on one of these. We bought an NTK, so we'll check back in. One problem I uh, did have that I wasn't sure if I was going to share, but I'm going to, is uh, when I was pulling the transmission and transfer case out, I had to raise the truck to uh, get clearance to get them out from underneath. Um, this jack's, uh, you know, fairly inexpensive one, and I've used it quite a bit for trannies and uh, gas tanks and such, but not really made for the bulky transmission transfer case combo. So that whole thing did come tumbling down and land on the output yoke of the transfer case um so i'm gonna pull out a part and see if i can find any damage inside i bought a new yoke from advanced adapters already um and the other issue or really reason for going this deep is the uh the whole powertrain's got 250 to 300,000 miles on it um i kind of lost track with the uh cluster swap i did about 20 years ago but um i think it's a good time while it's apart to check everything out and uh, freshen it up. So hopefully we can go on a bunch more adventures and do less wrenching. All right, pretty typical for me, but one thing has led to another. So from the failed external or internal slave cylinder, we have now progressed to transfer case rebuild kit, including an OEM Borg Warner chain and an oil pump. Um, a brand new AX15 from Advanced Adapters and of course the Advanced Adapters external slave kit order both of those from Summit Racing. Um, I'm not gonna cover in detail the transfer case rebuild. I will let you know any problems I run into 
or any special tools that are needed. Um, I found a good video from BSK Garage that I watched and I'm going to just keep that in mind while I'm doing it. And uh, I'll link that. And uh, I did buy this puller kit from Amazon for the, the pocket bearings that uh, are about the only problem I saw trying to get those out. Um, so I'll let you know how that goes and uh, we'll check back in. All right, we've got it pretty much store apart and uh, a bunch of parts are in parts washer and uh, we'll see if we can match up the bearings and seals and start putting them back together. Okay, so far everything's cleaned up, all the bearings and seals are replaced, um, and I'm trying to get the snap ring back on the planetary gear. This is the style snap ring. These are the snap ring pliers I have. The guy in the video said it was going to be a pain in the butt, and it is. It just keeps uh, popping off or tweaking sideways like that, and, uh, and the shelf camera keeps screwing with it. All right, that took most of the day. I... Uh, referred back to the video several times and make sure I didn't miss anything and I actually did forget to put the big snap ring for the planetary gear in and had to undo some stuff but uh no big deal at least I figured it out before it was all done um couple things if you're doing this on your own the um slip yoke eliminator kit uses a different seal so I actually left that seal and bearing in there because they're not very old anyway and uh it looks like an advanced adapter's part number on it, so I'm not sure if there's a part store one readily available or not. Um, but yeah, other than that, it went pretty good. Here's our new AX15 that I ordered from Summit Racing, sold by Advanced Adapters. Uh, came very well packed in a big old box, totally covered in expanding foam. Kind of messy and hard to get rid of, but very well protected. Um, so that's a brand new one. It's already got the front nose on it for the external type slave cylinder and uh here's our old transmission with the internal slave cylinder throwout bearing assembly that is the cause of all our problems so here's the uh kit it's got a new shift fork and ball and we don't need that because it's on the new tranny but if we're using the old one slave cylinder braided line and it's got adapters to adapt the the old clutch master to the new slave cylinder because they use a different uh, line system so we'll see how this all fits together the bolts that come with the advanced adapter kit for the bell housing or this hex type i've got the old ones so i'm going to reuse those because they're a little easier to deal with um, and the tail housing where the transfer case mounts is drilled for a tj not an xj and the holes are in the wrong place it clocks it wrong and unless you go beat on your floor it's not going to work um, my friend 3d printed me this um one of the guys in the forum shared the file and i wish i could give him credit but i don't remember where i got it right now but uh it fits over the output shaft index is in the old hole and gives you a nice drill guide to drill the hole in the right place so i'm gonna probably make a tempo of the old one and uh mark it just to make sure that the jig really ends up in the right spot but Assuming that works correctly, that should save me a lot of time. Um, the advanced adapter transmission also tells you to use a uh, specific part number of 1030 motor oil, Mopar motor oil, which my local dealer didn't have, or the Redline MTL. Nobody local sells that, so I ordered from Summit and I actually got it the next day. Summit's badass. This drill jig seems to be working really well. I guess I'll find out for sure when I get all the holes uh, drilled, if they line up. Um, I did go ahead and level the transmission with a level, and that way I'm using the level on the top of my drill to keep it as straight as I can that way. And I think that conjunction with the jig, we should be looking pretty good. Um, I forgot to mention earlier, the advanced adapter kit, if you're using your old transmission, it comes with this new nose piece, but it does not come with a seal. So I believe this is a correct national part number for the seal. Um, and I did go ahead and buy a national throwout bearing because the one that came with it looked really cheesy. No markings or brand on it. Like it was some kind of real inexpensive Chinese one. So we'll get back to work and see how it works out. So 
but I thought I'd share with you the uh, clutch fork uh, dilemma I've got here. The instructions advance gives you, it's pretty disappointing. You spend seven or 800 bucks and all they can give you is a two inch black and white photograph, but I can't tell which side these slots go on and it's got a, a spring kind of that fits in there. Um, maybe it doesn't matter, maybe it does. Uh, looking at forums and stuff, all I find is a bunch of confused people that nobody knows. Um, and it also doesn't show you the pivot retainer clip, which I, I did find an article or motor train put one in and had to pull the whole tranny back out because they lost or didn't receive the clip and didn't even know they needed it. So a little bit disappointed. There's a knowledge base on their website and that forum or whatever does not work. Um, and it's uh, Veterans Day, so they're probably not open to call. I did find a diagram on Repairlink, which I used to look up OEM parts, and it's showing them going toward the slave cylinder side, so I'm gonna flip it around and hope for the best. I wish they could have, just one detailed photograph or diagram would have been enough to save me about an hour of research here, but. I know sometimes it's hard to get your butt out in the garage on the uh, cold winter days, so I've got my patio heater out here to make it a little bit easier. And then I've got my TV with Vice Grip Garage, so I can be grateful I'm not laying in a muddy field working on a rig full of uh, mouse poop. And if you throw your remote control in a bag, you won't wreck it with your greasy hands. All right, I got all the holes drilled. Real happy with the way that worked out. That uh, drill jig worked perfect. I need to try to figure out where I got that uh, file from and send the guy a tip because it saved me all the time. I actually used a 764 drill bit, um, which is a little bit smaller than the 11 millimeter that it called for, and it still slid right on, so I don't think the alignment could be any better. All right, the transmission's uh, on its way back in. Um, one last note, hopefully, for the uh, advanced adapter bell housing. The clearance between the impact socket and the bell housing bolt is less than it used to be. Um, I've always used impact sockets in the past and never had a problem, but that one's actually stuck on there. I'm gonna have to pry it off or hit it with a hammer or something. Um, I also had to take off the flat washers that were used before, because they were hitting and keeping the bolt from getting properly tight. So just one more thing to keep track of, especially if you're under the rig in a dark area, sometimes it's hard to tell what's going on. All right, I think the hardest part's done. The engine and transmission are in place. Just need to finish hooking everything up and uh, film up the oil and all that good stuff. Uh, I put the transmission on separately after the fiasco I had trying to remove the assembly with the transmission jack I have. So a little harder on me, but a little safer on the uh, transmission. So I'm gonna finish putting it back together. Quick note on the advanced adapter line kit if you're using it. The um, AN adapter, it's inverted flared AN, needs to screw into the clutch master first and then screw the line in after. And then the line's got to straight in in a 90 degree and you need to put the uh, bent end on this end because otherwise it'll hit the firewall. And I need to get back under there and finish routing it. It's plenty long, it's actually too long, so I got to figure out how to safely keep the excess out of the way.